uh, encouraging and helped us to uh, fight the good fight of faith. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Uh, I know we have some new faces tonight, and we say welcome to you. Okay, the title of the message tonight is More Anointing. The anointing is the presence, uh, the very presence of the Holy Spirit uh, within us and upon us. Uh, and, and it's upon the revealed word of God. How much of the revealed word do you have? Uh, that's how much uh, anointing uh, that you have in you. So it's about his presence and, and letting him move. And that's the power of God moving in your life. You know, Ephesians 3.20 says that we have a power within. Uh, unto him who's able to do a, uh, exceeding abundantly above all we might ask or think according to the power that is working or active or energized in us. It's one thing to say, well, I got, I got filled with the Holy Spirit in Ox 6, uh, and the power is still there, but is it activated? It, Amen. Is it uh, energized? So we have a power within us, but there's also a power uh, upon us, and, and that is uh, released out uh, to the people. And so we're going to talk about anointing and how it operates. And I want to start with a story, and the story is about miracles that happened in the ministry of A.A. A. Allen, and uh, uh, this was years ago, and he was running a, a, a revival, and a healing revival, uh, and he had an, a young evangelist who was teaching faith in the uh, afternoon, and then A.A. Uh, a. Allen would pray for people, and there'd be miracles at night, and there was one woman there in particular, and she had brought her son, who was about four years of age now, and he had 26 deformities. Uh, he, he was blind, he was deaf, he was mute, uh, he had deformities in his heart and his uh, liver and his arms, and, that, and they couldn't move properly, and his legs, and they couldn't move properly, and, and all of those uh, deformities, and just on and on. And uh, so she came up to the young evangelist and said, uh, well, uh, Reverend Allen, pray for my son tonight. And he said, I don't know. And she said, uh, I've, I've come here. I've spent all week. I've spent all my money uh, being in these meetings. Uh, I, pray, I paid for the hotel and, the, and restaurant uh, meals all week. And I'm down to $20. And that's my $20 uh, to buy gas on the way back home. And because she lived hundreds of miles away. Okay, that night when uh, the meetings began, uh, A.A. Allen said, we're going to start with a faith offering. And by faith offering, I mean, you give something to the Lord that you cannot afford. Uh, and so uh, this woman, the mother uh, of this little boy, is the was the first one up jumped up and ran up to the offering and put something in the offering well the young evangelist wanted to see what she had put in so he jumped off the platform went down there uh to look into the offering uh plate and there was a 20 dollar bill in there she had given everything she, she had. had you know it's like the woman with the two mites uh, she had given everything she had jesus said she had given more because she gave something she couldn't afford. She gave everything she had. The other people, they just gave what they could afford. So it was like that woman with the two mites that really got Jesus's attention. Well, I believe he got, this woman got Jesus's attention because she gave him the gas money to go back home. She gave him everything uh, she had. She gave it to the Lord. Okay, and then uh, when Reverend Allen began to, minister he said oh, wait i'm the holy spirit is taking me away in the spirit and i'm in a hotel in a hospital room and there are doctors around this baby and, and i'm hearing the doctor speak and they say there are uh 10 deformities in this child and they and then he had said no it's 16 no it's 20 and then it's 26 deformities I mean, it's and so when he said that it uh, then he said is that person here? And the mother jumped up with the baby in her arms and, and ran up to him and handed 
uh, the baby to uh, Reverend Allen. Reverend Allen sat there. I stood there and held it, and, and his eyes were just uh, the baby's eyes were foggy, cloudy, and uh, all of a sudden the eyes began to clear up. And then uh, uh, one miracle after another, and the arms began to crack and, and, and to move, and then the legs began to crack and, and move. And, and uh, up until then, he had just always remained in a, a, a fetal state uh, because he couldn't move his arms, couldn't move his legs. And, uh, and so the, the miracles, there were 26 miracles that happened in that little boy that day. And then... Uh, Reverend Allen put the baby down uh, on the floor and the baby who had never seen his mother, who had never heard his mother uh, words, the words of his mother, never had spoken. He saw his mother across the platform. He ran over to her, ran, jumped up into her arms. Oh, there was one other thing I needed mm -hmm. to say. He didn't have any feet on his legs. Yeah, he didn't but have any feet. But then the feet began to grow and that's when uh, Reverend Allen put him on the ground and, and he ran over there, jumped up in his uh, mother's arms and cried out, mother, mother, mother. She he had never said a word, never seen his mother. And yet he knew who she was. Uh, that's 26 Amen. miracles. Woo! But then that, that's not the end of the story because mm -hmm. there were 12 people uh, sitting there in the front uh, that were in wheelchairs Cheers. and they all got up simultaneously Hallelujah. and Hallelujah. their healing and then that's not the end of the story, story because there were 15 people on stretchers and they all simultaneously got up healed so that's how the God that we serve. And, and and there was something that prompted that there was somebody there that was desperate and and I'm sure the people in the wheelchairs were desperate and the people in the stretchers were uh, were uh, desperate. But it, the thing that started it off was the mother who had only $20 uh, to go home and she put it in the offering plate. Uh, she gave what she could not afford. Now, again, there's more to the story because uh, after the service and she's there with her baby, who now has feet on his legs, who, who can stand and walk and talk and hear. Uh, and uh, a woman comes up to the mother and shakes her hand. And uh, when she takes her hand back, he, she has left $20 bill mm -hmm. in the, without anybody knowing, without anybody being told. And, and so a woman <laughs> gives her $20. And then another woman and another man, they start coming and lining up and they start putting uh, money in her hand. And then there was so much money coming in. She opened the purse and people started pouring money. Woo! Hallelujah! That's the God we serve. Amen! That's the God we serve. There was a desperation for the miracles to happen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. And, and so I, I want to talk about anointing, but I'm going to come back to this story and example. And, and so we'll know how it operates, how the anointing operates. Well, really, there are two aspects of the anointing. You have the power within, that's Ephesians 3.20. And we know from 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 and 27, that we have an anointing within us. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's on the revealed word. And it's how much revealed word you have. It's not how much word you memorize with your mind because that's intellectual power. It's how much of the, uh, has the Holy Spirit revealed to you about the word of God? And that becomes the anointing within you. And by that anointing, you, oh, glory to God, Hallelujah. you know the difference between mm -hmm. truth and error, I mean, between uh, deception and what is real and what I mean, is true. I mean, I mean, okay, so... If you know that, it's also the power within you. So this anointing within you is for your sake. Uh, it's to help you uh, with godly character. That, that's what it's about. To strengthen it's you. To strengthen you inside and, and to show you the difference between right and wrong and give you the power to do right. Now, that's godly character, developing godly character. 
A lot of people think, well, when I get my character developed and when I have good character, then I'll ask for the power. You cannot develop godly character without Out. the power, power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the way it operates, it's like a pillar, a, a, a giant pillar within you. The anointing within is like a pillar. And it helps you to have a godly character. And, and see, if we look at Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verses 29, it talks about corruption. It says, don't have corruption and don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Because, see, if you have corruption inside of you, whether it's your thoughts or whether it's your speech or, or your actions, see, and you're divided, uh, then th your pillar of anointing within is not fully developed. That's the anointing within that will tell you what's true, what is error, what is right, what is wrong. That's the anointing within you, the Holy Spirit within you. Jesus said that I'm going to send the promise of the Father upon you. I'm talking about John 14, 26, uh, and he's going to teach you all things. So that you have that anointing within you to teach you all things, and that is for your sake, the anointing within but there's another type of anointing, and that's the anointing upon you. Jesus said in uh, Luke chapter 24, 49, uh, stay in the city until the spirit, the promise of the Father, comes upon you. So there's, a, there's an anointing within you. There's an anointing upon you. And uh, until you be clothed with the Holy Spirit, Ooh, hallelujah. clothed with power. And Acts 1 8 said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So there are two forms of anointing. The reason I want to talk about these, I want to relate it back to the incident with uh, Reverend Allen. See, Reverend Allen had a basket of the gifts upon him, and, he, and those gifts could be poured out. Of, upon the people and, and that day there were 26 miracles in that in that baby and there were 12 uh, miracles on the wheelchairs 15 miracles on the stretchers and many many more because he had this great basket of gifts upon him and the people were desperate for them and then drawing them out yes i mean that's an important point right that, that's, there. you've got to be desperate for mm. the gifts okay and, and but then that's, there's that anointing within, and that's the pillar within you to hold up the basket. And, and now some people uh, have, have, they focus on the basket of gifts upon them, the Holy Spirit upon them, and they don't develop the character within, the godly character within, and so they don't have the, uh, the, uh, the pillar, the strength to hold up the basket. And so they're destroyed. Uh, from mm, that. Mm. And I'll give you an example. Balaam, uh, see, a, a ruler of a nation came to him and he wanted him to prophesy against Israel. And, and he offered him a lot of money. And, uh, but God wouldn't let him uh, curse Israel. But then we see, if we go on to the New Testament, we find out that he chased uh, unrighteousness the wages of unrighteousness and it destroyed him. Mm -hmm. So he had the gifts upon him. He had the anointing upon him. He could prophesy, but he didn't have the character, godly character within him. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Now also Saul, King, King Saul, Saul is another example of somebody who could prophesy. He, he would get with the prophets and he could prophesy but he didn't have the good godly character within him. He was constantly trying to kill David, and eventually he fell on his own sword. Uh, he was destroyed. Mm -hmm. So it, some people carry the gifts upon them, the anointing upon them. That's the power of the Holy Spirit to minister to other people. But you also need the uh, anointing within you and that is for your sake to develop godly character so that you will know the truth and the difference between the truth and error. So the Bible talks about grieve, not the spirit. Amen. So, so I'm Amen. going to put it this way, and this is Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. Uh, I'm going to put it this way. Please the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Don't grieve, grieve the spirit. The spirit. Mm. And the way we grieve the spirit is... 
having corruption uh, in, uh, in us, in our spirit, or in our thoughts, or in our uh, actions, or in our words. And so don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So we're talking about how do you have more anointing? Well, don't grieve, grieve the, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, but please the Spirit. And by how do you please it? Because you are concerned about the things of God, putting your affections on things above where God said and, mm -hmm. uh, and not on the earth. That's the way to please God. Now, there's the other warning, and, and that is don't quench the, the spirit. spirit. That's 1 uh, Thessalonians 5. And I want to start from uh, 16 and go down to 20. And it, and it says, and what I'm talking about here on quenching is uh, we can either release the power and presence of the Holy Spirit or we can quench the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. So grieving is about your character, but quenching is about the power oh, of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, so if we look at those verses, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through uh, 20, we'll see it says rejoice. And then it says pray, pray. Mm -hmm. Then it says uh, uh, give thanks, be mm -hmm. thankful. Be thankful for what Christ did for you mm -hmm. on the cross. Amen. You might say, well, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Be thankful for Christ. Yes, for amen. What he did for amen. you on the cross. Rejoice. Amen. And again, I say rejoice. And rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing. ceasing. If you're doing those things, you will be releasing the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. But if you're not doing any of those things, if you're not praying, you're not rejoicing, you're not thankful, then you're quenching the presence and power Ooh, of the hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another warning there, and that is despise not, not prophesying oh hallelujah hallelujah so people listen to me when <laughs> people start prophesying when when people close their ears to that when they harden their heart against prophecy and the gifts of the spirit then they are quenching the presence and power oh, of hallelujah. the spirit mm -hmm. and, and and one person can do it here in this group that you can you can do things in, in your life uh, that hinder all of us. We all need to be doing what this, what these verses say. We need to be rejoicing evermore. We need to be praying without ceasing. Glory to be God. We thankful. Need to be thankful. And we need to be valuing prophesying. Hallelujah. See, if you close your ears when when people begin to prophesy and say, well, I don't believe in that. I don't believe it. You're quenching the power, power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so I, I want to go back to uh, Reverend Allen there, and you see what happened. The people, there was desperation yes. for the gifts to flow through him. Yes. Uh, and uh, so how do you increase the anointing? Well, I, I've already told you in this, don't be single-minded, be single uh, mm -hmm. with your I own Jesus. I mean, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't be divided and, and have a du double mind and don't, don't have corruption mm. in your life. That's one way you can increase the power of the Holy Spirit within you. Now, for it to flow out, then glory to God, there has to be some people that you've been ministering to and they've been they begin to draw from There's you. There's a hunger there. There has to be a desperation and hunger. You look at the uh, the woman uh, with the issue of blood. She was desperate for Jesus. And she came up behind him. I'm talking about Mark 5, verse 30. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And, and so she came up behind him, touched the garment, and the power went out of him because she's desperate uh, for the healing and for the power. And it went into her. And when he turned to her, he didn't say, woman, my faith has made you whole. No, he said, your, your faith, faith, your faith has made you whole. Glory to God. Let me tell you, you, you want to be whole, sound and whole? It's by your faith. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Be hungry for the things of God. See, how do you increase these two anointings that I'm talking about? The anointing within and the anointing upon you. How do you increase them? Well, 
you in, you increase the anointing within you. That's the that is that pillar I'm talking about. Developing godly character. Uh, continue to to be following the Holy mm -hmm. uh, Spirit and let the Holy Spirit be uh, be sensitive to the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. See, if you're carrying corruption in your life with what you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're doing, then, then that's going to silence the Holy Spirit because that's quenched him. You've quenched him. If you are double-minded, if you're, if you have corruption uh, in your life, then, then you've, you're, you've silenced him. He's a dove. He's a clean dove. That's what he's portrayed in the Bible as a, a dove. And that's and a clean a bird. bird. And, and he won't dwell with corruption and evil. Mm -hmm. You've got to clean it out of your life. And so you build this pillar within you. Uh, that's the anointing within you. And it'll tell you the truth. And it'll cause you, uh, give you the power to do what's right. And stay on the path of righteousness. And then if you begin to operate in the gifts, and you begin to pour out to people, then they will want more of, of it. And they become desperate for you. Then the anointing upon you will pour out like it did on a, a Allen. Mm. Now here is a, and a little chorus. All right. I just did this is coming up strong in me right now. It's just a little chorus. It goes like this. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me yes lord let it fall on us tonight in the name of jesus see jesus said you just stay in the city don't go out until you're filled with the yes. holy spirit until the holy spirit comes upon you yeah don't uh, be my witnesses i don't want witnesses out there that don't have power Ooh, hallelujah mm -hmm. you, you're going to be my witness only after uh, the holy spirit comes upon you you receive power uh, from the Holy Spirit coming up on you. Now, I want to go back to the story about A.A. A. Allen because he had these great, miraculous gifts. The people were desperate for him. They were drawing them out. So how do you increase the gifts? You begin to pour out to people. And, and as they begin to, to see the gifts within you and they become desperate for those gifts, they'll begin to operate and you'll pour them out. Now, uh, and a very interesting thing about A.A. A. Allen, with all these tremendous miracles that happened in his life, he was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. He was an alcoholic. Can you imagine that? How, how can you have all of these gifts? Because he hadn't developed the pillar within him. Oh, he hadn't I developed can. the Amen. pillar to hold up the basket of gifts upon him. And, and so he was operating with those gifts of the in the basket and pouring out, the people were drawing and desperate. It wasn't all about him. It was about the people. They were desperate right, for the right. gifts that they were seeing in him. And, and so you need to be around people where you're pouring out your gifts. Then they will see that you have the gifts. They'll want to more of them. But you need to develop that pillar within of the anointing. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you've got to have a place that is uh, free from corruption. Amen. You've Amen. got to have purity uh, inside of you. So even though A.A. A. Allen could work and operate with these great miracles, it was so much of the draw from the people. So how do we develop these two aspects of the anointing? Well, the anointing within is for you to strengthen you in your inner person, and it's to show you the difference between right and wrong and the power for you to do right, and the way you get that is a hunger for the Holy Spirit, Amen. a hunger Amen. for the things of God, and put your affection on things above, a hunger for that, and to uh, weed out the corruption uh, in your life, whether it be in your thinking or what, in your words or, or in your actions. Now, the way to increase the basket and the anointing upon you and the gifts upon you is to have people around you who are desperate yeah. for what you carry. And, and drawing from and you. And drawing from you. 
you know, you'll see more miracles in these sessions if you're desperate for them and begin to draw Amen. as a group that you have, that you're desperate for them and want them, then, then you draw on them. We began to see how that woman started that whole process, that she gave away all that she had because she was desperate for miracles and she needed 26 miracles uh, for her son. And, and we need to recognize that the anointing was within us, within us, but it's also upon us to minister out to other people. I hope this has uh, explained some things to you. And I want to say that we see this happen uh, all the time, that there are many people who have really focused on the basket of gifts uh, upon them and haven't spent the time to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to build the pillar within them, the anointing within them. And uh, a few years ago, there was a great revival in Florida that happened, and, and people from all over the world were coming to that uh, place in Florida uh, to receive miracles, and there were all kinds of miracles going on there. And then the young man uh, that had all this basket of the gifts, and the gifts were being poured out, he committed adultery, and it stopped it the revival. Stopped, it stopped the revival. His committing adultery. Why did it stop? He committed adultery. But the people were desperate, and they were drawing. So he had the great gifts of the Holy Spirit operating through him, but he hadn't developed the character, the godly character within him. And there are lots and lots of examples of that. And you see it all the time that uh, that uh, mm -hmm. pastors and ministers and of all uh, ranks and types, are, uh, they fall. Uh, the people get uh, desperate for the gifts they have, uh, but yet they're not developing the character within them, godly character. So we need to operate in both ways. We need the godly character within us and the power of the Holy Spirit and it comes together, the character and the power together. Some mm -hmm. people are focused on the power only and not character. Some focus on character and not power. Yeah. And none of that's going to hold up a big basket. To have the gifts flowing in your life, you've got to have the power and godly character. And I call that a strong pillar to hold up the basket Amen. of the gifts that operate upon you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you. Thank you for being here today, and I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Now, the Lord wants us to be strengthened within, and he wants us to be strengthened without. And so as we, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And as you, as you build yourself up on uh, on, in the Holy Ghost by praying in the Spirit. I pray that each one of you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and that you're using your prayer language each and every day uh, to build up your faith and to build up that pillar uh, that uh, Brother Fred has been speaking to us about. Also being in the presence of the Lord with praise and worship and listening to what he has to say to you uh, this is this is something that that is so important to keep yourself uh, built up in the Lord. And then the the, the power without uh, it's so true uh, to be around people that are that that draw uh, those gifts from you, uh, being around uh, in individuals that that need hope, that need uh, encouragement, that need, healing in their bodies. Uh, and, you know, we're not, we're not lone uh, people that we can stay in a cave and, and not, not be with other people. Uh, we, we, the Lord wants to use each and every one of us as in, in Catherine Kuhlman said, you know, he's only looking for a willing vessel, you know, and if you're a willing vessel, then God will use you. 